Hi students. Today in this section, we are going to talk about the factorization of the polynomial x squared plus bx plus c. And note that the coefficient of x squared is equal, equal to 1. And for example, let's say we have to factorize the expression x squared plus 5x plus 6. And note that this expression is none of the four factorization techniques we have learned before. We cannot find common factor here. And there is no like there are no like terms. And this is not a difference of two square or nor a perfect square format. And so we need a new method to factorize this expression. But before we can factorize this, let's reverse our process. We do an expansion of two factors. And let's say if we expand x plus 2 times x plus 3, and we can simply just expand the two factors. We have x squared plus 3x and then plus 2x plus, this is 2 times 3, we have 6 here. And finally, we have the expression x squared plus 5x plus 6. And you can see that the last term, 6, this constant term, in fact comes comes from the product of 2 and 3. And in the middle term, the x term, plus 5 is come from coming from the sum of 2 and 3. And therefore, we now have some idea that the last term of this polynomial is the product of two terms. 2 times 3, and then the middle term is the sum of the two terms, 2 and 3. And our picture will be even clearer if we write the two factors in a vertical format. And here, x times x, we have x squared. And 2 times 3, we have plus 6. And in the middle term, will be x times 3, plus 2 times x, therefore we have 3x plus 2x, and finally we have x squared plus 5x plus 6. And note that you can realize that the middle term involves some sorts of cross over multiplication and the sum of the two terms, 3x plus 2x. There is a crossover, crossover here. And therefore, if we really have to factorize x squared plus 5x plus 6, all we need to do is to come think out two factors and write it in a vertical format. And at the same time, inspect the factors of the last term, uh, 6, and which if we have in this case plus 2 times plus 3, we come up with 6. And uh, this will be much clearer if we have another example. If we have to factorize x squared plus 7x plus 6, and all we need to do is to decompose 6 into two factors. It can be 1, 6, or 2, 3. And if we write the two factors in a vertical format like this, and then we again we can multiply the two factors or expand the two factors and see which one will come up with the middle term of plus 7x. And obviously, we simply care about the middle term only, because the first term, x squared, x times x will always be x squared, and therefore this is not our main concern. And the last term, 6, since we have decomposed 6 into two pairs of factors, so plus 1 times plus 6 will always be 6, and then 2 times 3 will always get 6, therefore the first term and the last term we don't need to care about in this stage. All we need to do is to check out whether which expansion will come up with the middle term 7x. And then we can see that for the first pair, we have plus 6x plus x, we have 7x. And in the second pair, we have 3x plus 2x equal to 5x. And therefore, this one, 
the second pair does not work. And so, this is not be won. And in fact, the answer will be, oops, sorry, x plus 1 times x plus 6. And since there is some sort of a cross over multiplication and summation in the factorization process, so we call this method the cross method. Cross method. And now we can try another example. Factorize x squared plus x x plus 15. The first step will be decompose 15 into two factors. We can have 1 times 15 or 3 times 5. Again, we write the two factors in a vertical format. We have uh, x plus 1 times x plus 15 or x plus 3 times x plus 5. And the second step will be cross multiply the factors and see which come up with the term in the second term plus 8x. And obviously, the first pair doesn't work because it will have the term 15x plus x and this come up with 16x. And this is not what we want. And in the second pair, we have 5x plus 3x and finally we get x Therefore, this is what we want. And the answer will be x plus 3 times x plus 5. This is our final answer. And now we can run up our cross method. It simply composed of only two steps. But these two steps must be completed in this order, uh, in the exact order. Step 1, decompose the last term into two factors. The last term is always the constant term, the number term. And step 2, we can do the cross multiplication of the two factors. And the last step will be, we have to make up the middle x term. And so, we can now move a little bit further and ask ourselves, what if the expression has a minus sign in the middle term. We have x squared minus 8x plus 15. And since it, it's a minus 8x, we cannot do this using positive factors. And in fact, if we think deeper, 15, if we decompose it into two factors, we can have minus 1 times minus 15 or minus 3 times minus 5. Because in mathematics, if we multiply two negative numbers, we always come up with a positive numbers. And so, if we have to factorize x squared minus 8x plus 15, the two factors will be x minus 3 times x minus 5. And therefore, if we cross multiply. We have minus 5 times x plus minus 3 times time 6, we get minus 8x. And therefore the answer will be x times 3 multiplied by x times x minus 5. Okay, practice makes perfect. We can learn more by simply doing more examples on cross method. And we can see that there are quite a number of factors in the number 24. We can have 1, 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6. And note that the last term is a negative number, minus 24. Therefore, either one number will be a negative and the other will be a positive number. And therefore, we finally come up with 8 pairs of factors. We have a total of 8 pairs of factors. And only one pair of factors can make up the middle term plus 5x. 
And so we can inspect the factors one by one. And remember, we have to make up the bit of time plus 5x. And as you can see, minus 1, 24. This, this has no hope to make up a 5x term here. And so the minus 2 times 12, we can cross out those unlikely factors. And uh, minus 4 times 6, this is, again, a pair of no hope factor. This is no hope, no hope, no hope. And so, the most likely factors will be minus 3 times 6 or 3 times minus 8. And you can, we can write the factors in a vertical format. Plus 3, x minus 8. And we have to always remember that if this is a negative number. This pair of factors should be one positive and the other negative. And now we can do the cross multiplication here. And uh, we have uh, plus 8x minus 3x. We have plus 5x. And in the second pair, minus 8x plus 3x, we have minus 5x. And so, obviously, the second pair does not work for us. And therefore, we can now write our answer. x squared plus 5x minus 24 equals to x minus 3 x minus 3 times x plus 8. And uh, it is always a good practice to check our answers because uh, we can simply check whether our factorization solution is the correct one. We can simply expand or reverse the process. Minus 3 times 8, we have minus 24. x times 6, we have x squared. Minus 3 times x plus x times positive 8, we have plus 5x. And therefore, after checking, we are sure that the answer is correct. And then we have another practice problem here, x squared plus 2x minus 8. We can decompose minus 8 into two factors again. We can have 1 minus 8 minus 1, 8. Or we can have 2 times minus 4 or minus 2 times 4. Again, we have to make up the middle term plus 2x. And it is obvious that these two pair of factors 1 and minus x or minus 1 times x has no hope to make up the middle term. And now we have only two pairs of factors left. But uh, since uh, we have the middle term uh, is a uh, plus 2x, we can simply sum up these factors. And the one which come up with plus 2 will be the answer. And obviously, this does not work because 2 plus minus 4, we have minus 2. And therefore, our factor will be x minus 2 times x plus 4. And we can write the factors in a vertical format. And check whether we can come up with the middle term plus 2x. Again, x times plus 4 plus 4x, right, minus 2x. And then we have plus 2x. Therefore, two, two factors will be x minus 2 times x plus 4. Okay, next. Factorize minus 6x minus x squared plus 7. And we can see that this expression is not arranged in the format of x squared plus bx plus c. And so, in order to use cross method, we have to rearrange the term first, and such that they are in the descending or descending powers of x. And yes, we have to arrange the term in descending powers of x because uh, before we can use the cross method. And therefore, we can rearrange in this way, minus x squared plus 6x 
plus 7. But we have a minus term here. We have minus x squared, which is a bit troublesome for the cross method to work. And we can simply take out the common factor of minus 1. And therefore, we have minus bracket x squared plus 6x because uh, minus times plus 6x, we get minus 6x. We have to change the sign here. And again, we have minus 7 inside the bracket. And now we have the form x squared plus bx plus c now, and we can apply the cross method. Again, we decompose minus 7 into two factors, 1 minus 7 or 1 minus 1 plus 7. And since the middle term is plus 6x, therefore we can simply sum up uh, some of these two numbers and see which can come up with the positive 6 here. And obviously, this does not work. And therefore, we can write the factors in a vertical format. x minus 1 times x plus 7. And if we, if we cross multiply it, plus 7x minus x, right, plus 7x minus x, we get 6x. And therefore, the answer will be x minus 1 times x plus 7. And remember, we have a minus sign before these two brackets. And notice that in some books, they may write one factor, uh, rewrite one factor in another way because uh, they sometimes they don't want the minus sign before the bracket. And therefore, some books will write the answer as one minus x here. And therefore, if you see your answer does not match exactly with the answers in the textbook, we have to be aware of the minus sign. Sometimes they just put the minus one into one factor. And look, that's, uh, this the minus one does not affect the the factor x plus 7 because uh, it's already embed, uh, it's put inside the first factor and that will be okay. Finally, the last example is a bit more difficult but in fact we, we can simply apply the cross method in the same way and it happens that uh, the only difference is the last term is not the constant term, it's the plus 12 n squared. And we have to make up the middle term minus 7 times mn. And therefore, we have the first three pairs of numbers n times 12m, 2n times 6n, 3n times 4n. Because we have a plus sign here. So, in the first place, we think of only the positive terms. But look at that. Yeah, we have the minus 7 in the middle term. So, only the factors with the minus sign is able to make up the middle term of minus 7mn. And therefore, we simply sum up the factors and see which can come up with minus 7. And uh, the first two pair is not possible. Only the last pair is possible. And therefore, we can now write, write the factors in a vertical format. m minus 3n and m minus 4n and cross multiply. We have minus 4mn minus 3mn and we have minus 7mn. And so the answer will be m times 3n, uh, sorry, m minus 3n, sorry, multiply by m minus 4n. And in fact, we can go a little bit further. What if we change the sign of the middle term? The expression becomes m squared my, uh, plus 7mn plus 12n squared. Can we factorize this expression? 
And since the only the middle term is involved, we have plus 7mn. And uh, this change is rather obvious. We can simply change the minus 3n, minus 4n to plus 3n, plus 4n, and we can easily come up with plus 7mn. And therefore, the answer will be m plus 3n times m plus 4n. And we can, in fact, make a little bit further. What if we change the sign of the last term? m squared plus 7mn minus 12n squared. Can we factorize this expression? And I suggest you can just think for yourself. Try, try to find whether we can find two factors. We can make up the expression m squared plus 7mn minus 12n squared. And if this is not possible, ask yourself why.